Morning folks, sorry I'm running a few minutes late. I'm afraid somebody came to my door just before 11.15 and we just got rid of them. All right, so it's Indy Truck TV. Put the truck and at home in his office in Salisbury, North Lanarkshire, where it is mostly sunny and 17 degrees. That's the weather forecast for Salisbury, North Lanarkshire. If you want to know what the weather's like where you are, look at your own bloody windy. All right, let's get this review underway. Okay, and this is the news review of the 28th of the 7th, 2022, better known to you and me as yesterday. Okay, right. Now, Thursday started with only one theme in the rags. The rail strike by Network Rail workers over pay and conditions. Network Rail have offered 2% or 3% if Network Rail workers accept worse terms and conditions and 2,700 layoffs. Now, we had inflation running at 9.4% and expected to rise by 11% by, to 11% by October. Mick Lynch at the RMT says they are taking the fish. Transport Secretary down that road, um, a Grant Sharp, refuses to intervene, saying he doesn't know enough about um, the workings of the rail network to get involved in the strikes. Now, we spoke about this yesterday. We have a Tory minister not on top of his brief. There's no surprise at that because there's not a single idiot in Bojo's cabinet, although it's not to be his cabinet for much longer, who have got a grip on their brief. All right, now let's move on. Tuesday, and the Tories are looking for Johnston to stand, uh, uh, looking for someone to stand aside and a very safe Tory seat to allow Boris Johnson to make a comeback at the next election. And the Times also has a campaign going to get Bojo to rescind his resignation and stay on as Prime Minister. Now, there's only one thing to say to that, folks, and that is, nurse, nurse, the Tories and the voting population of the Tory membership down that road are after bloody meds again. Bojo, stay on. Wow, mental. Oof, moving on, Thursday. And the English Tories take another leaf out of the 1930s Nazi Germany's books. On May the 2nd, 1933, Adolf Hitler gave a speech saying that trade, the trade union movement in Germany needed to be quashed. Liz Truss, Tory leadership hopeful, um, he also wishes to crush the trade union movement here in the UK. The Trust's uh, sites are set in the RMT at the moment, but uh, believe me, workers' rights are in their sites. Now, the Tories have recently introduced a bill to allow companies to hire temporary staff to replace striking employees. BT and post office workers are about to strike, so watch the post office and BT do exactly that. They are P&O ferries. So, a eh, workers' rights are well under attack. Now, the move to fascism down that road is accelerating. We spoke about this yesterday, the persecution of the disabled. Um, eh, they moved on then to persecute the Romano Gypsies with the police uh, crimes, courts and sentencing bill down that road, basically out outlawed their nom nomadic lifestyle. Now, it would appear they're going to take the third leaf out of Hitler's book and go after the trade union movement. Absolutely horrifying. The F of meaning fascism is definitely the fold down that road. Right, moving on. Um, Thursday, and Sir Comrade Starmer is in the poo as trade union members look at him as a liability and a waste of space. Sir Comrade Starmer, the red Tory chief of the establishment, asked has ordered this front bench team to steer clear of the industrial actions taking place over paying conditions and an attempt to appear like a government in waiting. The Sam Tarry Labour Leader's Junior Shadow Transport Minister was sacked um, as a Junior Shadow Minister for joining the picket line in London Euston Railway Station. Now, this leads to major uh, discontent among trade union members and the trade union chiefs. With Mick Lynch, the president of the RMT, telling Starmer, you won't get into number 10 without the backing of the 700, 7 million UK trade union members. 
Okay. Now here in Scotland, Kevin Lindsay, um, uh, the chief of the Aslev Union, he rips up his Labour a uh, membership and discussed at the Red Tory uh, Starmer stance. In response to criticism, Labour put out a wishy-washy press release saying Labour will stand by workers campaigning for better pay and conditions. Stand by! Stand by! The Labour movement was founded to advance workers' pays and conditions. Stand by is not what the Labour movement should be doing, or the Labour Party should be doing. It should be champion, championing, championing, sorry, let's try it again, should be championing the cause of workers' rights and pay and conditions. But Labour have went that far to the right that they're just Tory light and Starmer they won't get involved in these disputes because he thinks he'll put off centre-ground, middle-class, traditional Tory voters, as well as those in the north, across the Red Wall, who turn Tory because of the wee racist Brexit scheme. Okay, so Starmer is becoming even merrier. Well, we were even merrier up further on. Right, moving on Thursday. And here in Scotland, the Pravda are getting ready for an SNP bashing feast as the annual drug death figures are due to be released. Now, the Pravda are disappointed as the figures this year saw um, the first decrease in drug deaths in Scotland in seven years. Angela Constein, the um, Scottish Minister in charge of uh, tackling drug deaths, says we have plateaued and drug deaths should now fall year on year. Angela is correct as it's been older drug addicts who have been dying as their worn out bodies could no longer cope with the amount of drugs they were taking. Kids these days are not really into hard drugs, recreational drugs a wee bit, but hard drugs are not really into. Kids are all um, a, right into their self-image in that these days. And the uh, heroin addicts and coke addicts look a bloody mess. It would they suit the kids of the day. All right, right, moving on. Uh, Thursday, here in Scotland, and the Fraser of Allender Institute release, uh, um, uh, releases a quarterly report that says one in four, uh, one in ten, uh, four in ten businesses in Scotland to cut back their operations due to rising energy costs and the skill shortages in the labour markets caused by Brexit. Now, with four in ten businesses cutting costs and uh, scaling back operations, we will see unemployment rise as it's the easiest way to cut your costs when you're on a business is to cut your workforce because they're your major cost. Okay. Right, moving on Thursday, and uh, it becomes clear that the UK energy giants and power, um, uh, power uh, producers have taken the piss. Um, uh, Centrica, uh, the owners of British and Stroke Scottish Gas, they posted profits of £1.25 billion for the second quarter of 2022, up from £226 million in the same quarter of 2021, basically five times. Uh, they, they, they raked in five times more profit in the, first, in the second quarter of 2022 is what they did uh, in the second quarter of 2021. Okay, the BP has posted £12 billion profits for the second quarter of 2022 and Shell posted £9 billion for the second quarter of 2022. We are getting the piss ripped right out as folks. This is what is driving inflation, as I said yesterday, is um, the energy giants. The merit cost for energy, whether that be fuel, we transport things around the UK, or we produce goods in factories, then the mere the goods coming out of these places cost. It's the energy giants that are driving food price inflation, but Brexit in there as well. It's the energy giants that are driving inflation all together. All right, so we're getting the piss ripped to ears. And they're profiteering on the back of the poorest in our society. In fact, on the back of everybody in our society, but the poorest in our society especially. Absolutely shockingly disgusting. Right, moving on Thursday. And the UK inquiry into the infected blood products uh, given to people in the UK in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, here's from former Scottish Health Minister Malcolm Chisholm. Mr Chisholm told the inquiry he wanted to pay compensation to those who had contracted hepatitis C from blood products uh, um, uh, given to them in the 70s and 80s. 
but he was told to resist that by the UK Health Minister at the time. The victims who contracted HIV from contaminated blood products have been receiving compensation from 1988. The new default Scottish Parliament started paying compensation to hepatitis to sea suckers in 2004. It's estimated that 30,000 people across these islands contracted HIV or hepatitis C from contaminated blood products from US and Dutch prisoners in the 70s and 1980s. The Scottish Parliament wanted to give all those affected by hepatitis C 50,000 in compensation. The Westminster government put the kibosh on that and set up the Skipton Fund, which offered those affected 20,000 in compensation. Okay, so what we're hearing in the blood, uh, the infected uh, um, uh, blood um, scandal for the 70s and the 80s is that the UK government just didn't want to fight com com compensation. It was actually pressure to the vault administrations that brought it about. Okay, okay, right, moving on Thursday. And the uh, a good news story is Dundee is picked as the site for a new battery plant for a uh, things like a uh, storing a uh, solar energy and of course for electric cars. The AMTE Power, which has a plant in Thurzo, said that it's going to move into the old Dunlop tire plant and create two hundred jobs initially to make the batteries. ATME um, estimate that once up and running, the plant will create a further 800 jobs in the supply chain to service a plant. So that's a good news story for Dundee. And they, if the plant's successful, I dare say, it will employ more than 200 um, employees. Okay, right, moving on Thursday, another good news story. The new hydroelectric scheme on the River Ness starts operations. The Hydro Ness plant, named by a Milton of Lee's primary school pupil, Grace McKenzie, will use a, an Achilles, an Archimedes screw, sorry, to move water from a low level to a high level reservoir, and then they will do the pipes to turn the turbines, okay? Now the plant will produce 500,000 kilowatt hours of power a year. So two good news stories in Scotland yesterday. Hey, that's no bad, eh? Right, moving on Thursday. And the details of how households will receive the UK's 400 quid a help with energy costs will be um, a, as a put out. Right. Now, the, a, those, paying, uh, the, the, those paying by direct debit <coughs> will get 60. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. We'll get 60 pounds in October, 66 in November, December, uh, then January, February, and 69 in March, totaling 400 pounds. Those on a uh, three monthly uh, schemes, in other words, the old bill, uh, paper billing scheme, will get it in their quarterly, will get it reduced for the uh, deducted for the quarterly bills, and those on pay P meters are to apply to their uh, uh, energy providers each month for a monthly voucher. Now, what, what the reports are saying is 28 million households in Scotland, England, and Wales will uh, receive the funding. There is no mention of Northern Ireland. So I'm afraid I'm not aware of whether the scheme is being extended to households in Northern Ireland. So um, if you're in Northern Ireland, I guess you better start asking, what's, uh, what's the story for you guys? Okay. Right, moving on. Thursday, when the Tory leadership race is still getting uh, more, more coverage than it merits. Anywho, the latest day, uh, the latest face to face history took place in Leeds. 1,500 Tory members break cover from their usual cut and twitching in their, in their uh, slum schemes. Uh, to policy questions at the Trust and uh, Sunak. By the end of the event, they had discussed uh, grammar schools, the welfare state, the UK Union, and the NHS. The West Trust comes out on top, according to um, reports in the MSM, but the Tory press fans don't want a brown PM. Simply, um, simply not English, dear boy, no matter how rich you are. So it still looks like Truss is going to make it into number 10 because the Tory press barons prefer a white woman to a brown man, no matter how rich and influential that brown man is. Okay. Moving on. And the Thursday. 
Red Tory leader Sir, to- Sir Comrade Starmer, and trying to stay relevant, um, he says wages have been stuck for a decade. Mr. Irrele- irrelevant of English politics won't back industrial action um, to unstick wages. So he's just made an arse of himself as the Labour Party Red Tories implode, joining the Blue Tories in an internal civil war situation. So it's not looking good doing that road two years out for the election, is it? Labour's in bloody meltdown. Tories in bloody meltdown. And nobody, nobody even notices the Lib Dems and the Greens doing that road. So we're going to end up with one of the two arses. It is, it's one of the two cheeks of the same arse in power again. Because believe me, Starmer and the Tories are that close together. You couldn't put a bag paper between the two arse cheeks at this point in time. Okay, moving on. It also Thursday, an investigation by the Independent says UK tankers are carrying Russian oil to help Putin bypass sanctions to get his oil in market. Right, the transfer to UK registered boats is taking place off the Suffolk coast and Bojo, the clown and his criminal cabal are well aware of what's going on. So, so much for Bojo being hard on Russia. The UK registered boats are taking fuel, uh, the oil for Russian boats, and it's probably being passed off as Scottish oil stroke UK oil. All right. Now, I wonder how Bojo's best pal, Zelensky's, Zelensky's going to feel about that. Eh? Bojo and the Tories are tub thumping, but as we all know, the Tories are highly backed by Russian oligarchs, and it would appear that the UK tankers, registered tankers, are taking, few, are taking oil from Russian registered tankers and moving it on. In other words, they're helping the Russians sell their oil. So it would appear that Bojo the Clown and the Tories have been gaslighting us all with a push about being strong against Russia. We need to thank the investigative journalists at the Independent for doing this. All right. Now, before I move on to the rags and what the rags have to say this morning, all under one banner's got a march to um, Helensburg, I think it is, T Fast Lane, the Mora. Um, a, it's a pro independence march to get rid of um, a nuclear weapons from Scotland. Now, if you can, folks, make it a line. We need to get a bigger presence on the streets. So far, the average size of these marches has been two to three thousand maximum. It needs to be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200,000, 300,000 as we get into 2023. We need to get a presence on the streets. All right. The other stories I picked out to talk about, folks, um, eh, from yesterday. Um, so let's move on and see what the rags have got to see this morning. Say this morning, huh? Okay, Scotland's paper Strudson urged to act faster over drugs death. So the Scotsman has demands to act faster on drugs death shame. It's no Scotland shame, but these older drug uh, uh, um, drug users that are dying at the moment, they went into drug use back in the Thatcher days. We're talking about people my age. When the heart was ripped to the Scotland's communities and a uh, what's called a uh, the cringe came on. West of Scotland syndrome. Just read the Black Report and they'll tell you how it affected life expectancies and things like that. Really serious stuff. But these drug eh, these drug users that are dying at the moment are older drug users. Their bodies are worn out for 30 years of eh, abuse. Right, moving on the Herald. More urgent action needed as drug deaths toll flatlines. It did the flatline, it dropped by 1%. Right, but uh, still over 1,300 people die, say figures. Um, the worst fatality rate in Europe. It is, but I've just explained why. Thatcher set Scotland into such a depression that people t- turn to self-medicating. As I say, it's all in. Uh, the West of Scotland syndrome and the Black Report. Go look it up yourselves. Right, the Daily Record has... Angry families demand action failed. 
1,300 Scots died from drug misuse last year, only nine less than 2020, despite the government's promise to make a, a national crisis, uh, make the national crisis. It's not crisis. You know, why this has been put at the door of the Scottish government and why they're picking it up, I have no fucking idea. This is a situation that was created by tax on the Tories. And taking drugs is a personal decision. It's got nothing to do with government policy. But if we want to go into drug misuse in government policy, drugs policies reserved to bloody Westminster. All the Scottish Parliament can do is tinker on the edge and throw Mary her money at it. The Daily Te Telegraph has stood and shamed over drug, drug debt rate. No, she's no. It was created under the Tories. Uh, and apparently, according to um, the Telegraph, white teenagers least likely to attend elite universities. That's because white teenagers can't afford elite universities. The Metro has stood and told drugs mission is failing. No, they didn't. If it's failing, why is it that it's stabilised and come down 1%? The press you get in the, that so-called press. Um, apparently, the courier, the courier's saying the cost of living crisis, living cost, um, risk drug death spiral. And that's right, because people will go into the press and will start drinking and taking drugs to self-medicate, to numb themselves. This is what happened in the 80s. Except for this time, we don't have the cringe. We have the confidence to start up and say, enough. The times goes on. Child gender chronic forced to close over safety fears. Review questions Tavistock NHS trust use of puberty blocking drugs. So the gender recognition, the, um, the gender thing, isn't it just um, causing a stushy here in Scotland? It appears causing a stushy um, other elsewhere in the UK as well. Okay, now the Scottish Daily Fuel has fury as energy giants rack up record profits. Now that's the first sensible bloody headline we've had up the mail for a long time. Okay, so and it goes on centric as 1.34 billion and they shells 9 billion and they, they and they, um, it doesn't they mention BP's 12.9 billion. Okay, the Scottish Daily Express has Shell and Centric attacked over bumper results as millions face fuel poverty, calls for new energy tax as firms rake in obscene profits. Now listen folks, you know that the Tories are in on this squeeze because, let's face it, this, 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 this rampant profiteering could be stopped by the stroke of a pen. They could legislate to cap it. They could legislate to say no. The maximum energy cost can get to is £1,700. But no, because the Tories are all big shareholders and they're all being bummed by lobbyists and the power generating companies and the energy and the, and the, and the, the oil and gas, by the oil and gas giants, the Tories are just sitting back and letting rap the property here and take its toll here in the UK. Um, the I has Tory contest leak inquiry grows amid toxic fallout. Um, a ministers worry they can no longer have frank discussions about policy in case what they say is weaponised in the Tory leadership race, the I reports. The paper says the Cabinet Office is investigating multiple weeks from inside Whitehall that were intended to damage certain candidates who were jostling to become the Prime Minister. All right, then the National goes on. Major Scottish Union boss exits Labour Party as left chief resigns and backs move to dis 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 disaffiliate itself with the Labour Party. Anger grows on Starmer's failure to back workers. And the other title on the National is drug deaths fall slightly, but level remains unacceptable. First Minister responds to figures. All right, as I say, the problem was created in the 80s by Thatcher and the bloody Tories. Um, and let's see where the stars go for us today. Well, we likely to start at last. And the staff of Scotland, apparently, how do these absolute toss pots sleep at night? Centrica and Shell rake in sickening profits as millions of its face fuel poverty. Money grabbing scumbags. Ah, the star, you gotta love them. They're very refreshing sometimes. They are not holding back this morning, any of the star. 
Yeah, they're in about them. Right, folks, that's what I've got for you there. The stories I picked out for you. Um, um, today, I hope you found them interesting. I hope you found them informative. Okay. So, as I say, all under one banner, Mark Zamora. Um, please buy tickets for the Indy 2 Cafes, a charity night, the 27th, uh, 24th of September, um, a, and a Holy Town, North Lanarkshire, at the um, General Motors Club. Prices, uh, ticket price £10, includes a buffet, entertainment, and raffle tickets. Can't really argue with that, folks. That's the deal. Come along. Make up the numbers. Come and meet me and David, Pete Scally, and the crew at the Indy 2 Cafe. All right. Um... Now, where else are we? Aye. Now, the campaign is underway, folks. I mean, uh, Project Fear Mark II is already up and running. So remember, uh, eyes on the prize. When you're out of your gonies. And get out there and win hearts and minds. Scotland will have its say. No matter how much noise the unionists make, Scotland will have its say. So the campaign's underway. Eyes on the prize. When you're out of your gonies, get out there and win hearts and minds. Okay. Support the independent media. Support the uh, independent broadcasters. Um, eh, support independent followers and followers, support broadcast in Scotland, independent live, into live radio, Calder Media, and the, um, the national newspaper. And if they have a crowdfunder gone, um, these independent followers and bloggers, and you've got a couple of uh, pennies to spare, throw them in the heart, will you? As you see, there is a campaign underway, and these guys need to get work. As you know, myself and my partner in treason, we don't want your money. If you like what it is, we do, always we ask us that you share it around, okay? Now, moving on to health messaging. We'll get the latest figures on how rife COVID is in the community today at lunchtime, but at the moment it's one in 15 years. So follow what the little guidance there is left out there. Face masks in enclosed public spaces. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. That's the last two pieces of guidance that's out there, all right? Now, if you're feeling under the weather, mask up, social distance. Um, show a wee bit of social, con uh, social conscience and care for your fellow citizens. And if you're still using NHS lateral protests, um, you can uh, please submit the results to NHS Scotland to get, keep a handle on how much of this is in the community. Okay. So that's it for this week, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a restful weekend. I hope you have a safe weekend. And I hope you avoid a lucky early weekend. All right. Now, if you can make it to the All Under One Banner event, at Fazla in the Mora, please do. All right, as I say, we need to get the numbers up because at the moment these marches are only atta 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 attacking two, three thousand people, which is understandable because COVID is still rife in our communities. But let's make a big turn to eh? And eh, enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Look after each other. Have a nice day. <laughs>